Welcome to this video on Lambda functions. This video is based on materials created by Professor Mark Vatzer of the University of Greenwich and is presented by me, Andy Wicks. So let's jump into some Scheme. As you know, we can do calculations in Scheme fairly easily. So in this case, we'd be calculating the area of the circle that had a radius of 3. So times the operator first, of course, and then pi times 3 times 3. That's fairly easy. So if I run that, and what I get is an area of 28.27 and some little bits. Well, that function could be written as a lambda expression. And at first, you're going to think, why would I do that? How on earth can this be useful? Because what we're going to get is something that looks a little odd. Let me show you. Here we have a lambda expression. Lambda is a Greek letter. And if you want to get it in scheme, all you do is hold down control and backslash and you get the character lambda in scheme. And you get the character lambda in racket. That only works in racket, by the way. So if I just delete that, if I run this, what I'm going to get, hopefully, is the same answer for both commands. And fortunately, I do. And what we've got here is a lambda expression. This expression returns a function. That function then gets evaluated. So in this case, this lambda function takes the parameter rad. The function that's being evaluated is times pi rad rad. And the input to this is 3. Let me show you how that's built up. Here we have the parameter list. Then we have the function that's being evaluated. And now what we're doing is saying, do this function with the number 3 in this case. And in that way, I can get this lambda function to evaluate a particular value. Well, you might think, well, so what? This doesn't look very useful to me. Well, this is a function. It's a function like the named functions that we looked at in the previous video. But it doesn't have a name. Lambda means this is anonymous. And what we've created here is an anonymous function, a function that doesn't have a name. Now, that may seem rather pointless, but it is extremely useful when we come on to things like recursion, which we're going to do in a moment. A lambda function is just something that returns a function. It's a rather odd concept, and if you haven't done functional programming before, it definitely seems rather weird. But a lambda function can be used as if it was a variable. So let's have a look at a situation where that might be useful. First of all, I'm going to delete the code I've got here. Then I'm going to do a control and R just so that both windows are clear. Now I'm going to read in a definition that I've got already. So I'm going to open a definition, and in this case, it's called newton raphson And here is the newton raphson definition that I created earlier. This is why you use definition windows. As you can see at the moment, the other window has disappeared, the interaction window. It'll be back in a second. What I've got in this final line here is a request that it calculates the newton raphson square root of 77 using a first guess of 2. We are not interested in the maths. If you are interested in the maths, look up the newton raphson method. As you can see, we're doing some recursion here. And we know it's recursion because a fat, ugly old man told you that. Recursion is the only kind of loop that's predefined in functional programming languages. So let's have a look. What we've got here is the definition of a function, recursion step, that takes two parameters, number and guess. And what it does is it does a bit of arithmetic with that. So it does a something. When we run recursion step, it expects to have two numbers, and it will output a result, the result of that calculation that we've got just here. In our main part of the program, we've got recursion step number guess here. And that's where we're calling that particular definition, that function. So that function is being used in here. And if I run this, what I've got is the output 8.77496 and so on. So it's saying that the square root of 77 
is is 8.77 and a but this looks quite complicated i've got two sets of definitions and do i really need that well if i use a lambda expression i can shorten that considerably let me show you functional programmers do like their abbreviations and if you can make the code a little bit shorter it runs a little bit quicker and this is a win so here we've got a lambda expression this lambda expression replaces the definition of the function that we had earlier. That lambda expression just gets evaluated. It goes away, it does whatever that function does, and it outputs a result. And that is fed into the equation again. So when I run this, we get the same answer as before, but we've made our code rather shorter and neater. Now, whether you consider this to be a good step, that's another matter. But lambda expressions are necessary when you're trying to abbreviate recursion. Thank you.